Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is portfolio questions on education and lifelong learning. And as ever, in order to get as many people in as possible, I'd be grateful for short and succinct questions and answers to match, please. Question number one, Graham Pearson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how many vacant beds there are in secure units for locked up, looked after children. Minister Fiona MacLeod. Thank you, Presiding Officer. There are 90 secure beds in Scotland. Capacity is monitored daily and information is available on the Secure Accommodation Network Scotland website. Graham Pearson. Uh, I'm obliged to the Minister for that to uh, answer. Uh, some concerns have been raised recently about the capacity within the looked after children uh, area, uh, particularly in respect of vacant beds when required. There's indications that uh, requests have been made outside Scotland because of a lack of vacancies. Will the Minister review the situation to ensure that we have sufficient accommodation? Minister. Thank you. As Mr Pearson knows, secure care is only used for a small number of young people who present high risk to themselves or to others. The average number of young people in secure care in 2012-13 was 78, a fall of 9% compared to the 2011-12 which is 13% under the capacity limit of 90 in Scotland. We're working with providers and Scotland Excel who manage a framework contract on behalf of local authorities and Scottish Government to monitor capacity issues. I can assure that the, uh, Mr Pearson that when I asked last week, there were no children known to be accommodated outside of Scotland. Thank you. Question number two, Mary Scanlon. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how it supports college students to complete their studies. Cabinet Secretary Angela Quinston. <coughs> Thank you, President Officer. On top of the record £104 million for student support this year, uh, we have been working very closely with Colleges Scotland and the Scottish Funding Council to understand the scale of any shortfall in 14-15. Uh, colleges have now said that they need £7 million, uh, down from their earlier estimate of £11 million. And I'm very pleased to say uh, that we will bridge that gap. In addition, since 2006-07, successful completion rates for full-time FE students has increased by 10 percentage points, and for those from the most deprived backgrounds, by 13 percentage points. Mary Scanlon. Well, I am pleased to hear that uh, the Scottish Government is taking seriously um, the uh, problems facing college students at this time, particularly given that our FE colleges have an excellent reputation of addressing inequalities and giving opportunities to students of all ages and backgrounds. So although the bursary awards have increased by 18 per cent, funding only increased by three, childcare awards increased by 22, but the budget only went up by six. So whilst I appreciate what the Cabinet Secretary is doing, will she also have a look at the NUS findings uh, which illustrate these figures? Cabinet Secretary. I appreciate uh, the question from uh, Mrs Scanlon. Uh, she will, of course, uh, also appreciate that um, our record in student support uh, for further education college students is very good. Um, and the budget uh, before this government took office was 67 million, and it now sits at 104 million. Uh, and as I said in my original answer, we have worked very hard, as we do every year, uh, to fill every, uh, the, the gap every year. And there are, of course, planned improvements for 15, 16, um, with inflationary increases uh, in bursary scales and childcare. I'm due to speak with NUS this afternoon uh, and to have a further meeting with them uh, in due course about a, a whole range uh, of student support matters. Thank you. I have several supplementary requests. Please keep them brief. Ian Gray. It's extremely welcome to hear that the, uh, the gap in bursary funding is to be bridged again this year. That, that is welcome. But the reality is that uh, not knowing until now that that money is going to be available has a real impact. Students are left waiting many months, not knowing if they will get bursaries. Colleges have to uh, spend or overspend their budgets. Would it not be better 
instead of doing this every year, if the Scottish Government has budgeted enough money for supporting students in the first place? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I'm glad Mr uh, Gray uh, welcomes um, the information that I gave earlier that we are indeed uh, meeting our obligations uh, to students uh, as uh, we always do. Um, as he will be aware um, that there are difficulties in predicting uh, the levels of student support uh, required because it varies on the personal circumstances of students, whether they have children or whether they don't have children and indeed uh, on, the, on the age uh, of the student. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll continue to work very hard uh, with our partners and with NUS Scotland uh, to resolve outstanding issues. Thank you, George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. Could the uh, Cabinet Secretary outline how the Scottish Government's budget for college funding compares to that in England? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, unlike the UK Government, the Scottish Government has uh, managed to stabilise uh, college funding. Um, as members will be aware, that we have created a funding floor of uh, £522 million, pounds, and in the draft budget uh, published, that will go up to £526 million pounds for uh, the, the forthcoming uh, financial year. Um, in contrast, uh, BIS plans to cut its adult skills budget uh, by £466 million, pounds, which is a decrease of over 17 per cent. Thank you, Neil Finlay. Given that we, we seem to be able to predict uh, the numbers in the budget for uh, higher education, but somehow we cannot predict it in further education, does the uh, Cabinet Secretary believe that Scottish Further education students are treated like second-class citizens compared to others in higher education. Cabinet Secretary. No, um, I certainly do not, Mr Finlay, and I'm sure that's no uh, surprise to you. There is indeed a very uh, genuine debate about the benefits of uh, discretionary funding versus entitlement funding, um, HE students, and of course there are many higher education students within the college uh, sector. Uh, they have entitlements to bursaries uh, and loans. Of course they have to pay loans back, whereas for further education students who could be entitled to up to £93 a week, uh, discretionary funding, but of course uh, they don't have to pay that back. But these are all issues that we have to explore in the round. Thank you. Question number three, Christian Allard. To ask the Scottish Government what work it is carrying out to streamline the process for the registration of new teachers. Minister Alistair Allen. The registration of teachers is a matter for the General Teaching Council for Scotland. Christian Allard. Would the Minister agree that we need to attract teachers from the EU and across the world and that this is ended by the failed immigration policies coming out of Westminster? Minister. Uh, I very much agree that uh, subject obviously to the, to the right regulatory controls being applied uh, by the General Teaching Council for Scotland, uh, Scotland can and indeed does benefit from uh, a diverse teacher workforce from uh, countries outside Scotland. Uh, it is, of course, vital that the UK's uh, immigration policy, as the member alludes to, uh, takes uh, cognizance of this need and also, indeed, that its rhetoric uh, uh, is suitable on this subject, too. Uh, Liam McArthur. That there is a considerable movement between teachers north and south of the border. And does he believe that uh, there is uh, work to be done by GTCS in terms of smoothing the process so that uh, vacancies can be filled uh, in, in teaching posts across Scotland as well? Minister. Well, the typical period, I think, um, for uh, registration for teachers within Scotland, that is, is around three to four weeks. Um, for teachers who uh, are coming from outside Scotland that is typically around 10 weeks. But I understand that the point the member makes, uh, and there have been uh, considerable efforts made uh, in particular areas where there's been a, a specific need uh, urgently for teachers to fast track that process. For instance, um, there were uh, successful efforts to fast track the, the progress um, for registration for a number of teachers from Ireland who are applying for jobs in the northeast of Scotland recently. Thank you. Question number four, Elaine Murray. Excuse me. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with D Dumfries and Galloway Council regarding its plans for Dumfries Learning Town. Uh, Alistair Allen. We have been working in partnership with Dumfries and Galloway Council through the preparation of the Dumfries Learning Town initiative and will continue to engage with the local authority to help it realise this vision. In addition, the Government is providing substantial investment of around £14 million through the Schools for the Future programme uh, to replace Maxwell Elton High School and its associated community facilities, uh, and also St Joseph's College, both of which form part of Dumfries Learning Town Initiative. 
Elaine Murray. The Minister, for his uh, reply, the Minister will be aware that the Dumfries Learning Town involves a new model of 13 to 3 to 18 education delivered on a whole town basis uh, and involves also the creation of a learning hub in North West Dumfries, bringing together early years vocational edu uh, education and adult education. Does the Minister agree that this approach is consistent with the recommendations of the Wood Report and will the, the Scottish Government therefore support the creation of the learning hub? Minister. Well, as has already been mentioned, there has been a degree of uh, engagement, uh, a long uh, tradition almost of engagement between the government uh, and the Friesen Galloway Council uh, over this subject and, and no shortage uh, of investment in schools in the area. Uh, the government does support the aspiration of a learning hub for Dumfries, um, but it is, of course, no secret that the government has, has taken a different view from the council uh, when they moved away from their initial proposals, which would have seen uh, the hub centred on the Crichton campus. Thank you. Question number five uh, has not been lodged and explanation has been provided. Question number six, Annabel Goldie. To um, ask the Scottish Government whether it anticipates a university student population contracting or expanding over the next five years. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. The Scottish Government does not anticipate a significant contraction or expansion over the next five years. Uh, the number of first degree entrants who live in Scotland, broadly the measure of the number of Scots school leavers going to university is up 7% uh, under this Government to 33,500. Annabel Goldie. The Minister will be aware of the recent Scottish Funding Council announcement regarding indicative funding decisions for 2015-16. And she'll also be aware there are continuing challenges in widening access to university, an area where none of us wants to see any contraction at all. But research confirms the funding package for Scotland's poorest students to be the most regressive in the United Kingdom because of significant cuts to bursaries. How does the Scottish Government think that switching students from bursaries to loans so that they have more debt can possibly improve access to university for our poorest students. Cabinet Secretary. Of course, I'm rather uh, stunned that Miss Goldie has tripped up to this chamber to ask me um, about student debt when in Scotland, uh, on average, uh, students have uh, debt of around uh, £7,500 uh, in comparison uh, to the £20,000 on average that students in England uh, graduate with. So uh, I think the, the Scottish Government uh, has a record that compares well um, with her government uh, south of the border. And of course, uh, we very much believe uh, that education should be based on the ability to learn and not uh, the ability pay to pay. And we will stick firmly to our position um, of no tuition fees. In terms of that balance between uh, supporting uh, tuition fees and that balance between bursary uh, and loans, uh, that is something that we have discussed with NUS Scotland. And it was at the request uh, of NUS Scotland that we do what we can uh, to ensure that we get more money uh, into the pockets uh, of students. And in terms of our minimum income guarantee uh, for the students from the poorest household, uh, depending on whether you're comparing students living at home uh, or students living away, uh, that support package is either the best or the second best in the UK. Stuart Maxwell. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I heard what the Cabinet Secretary just said to Ms Goldie in response to the question about students from more disadvantaged backgrounds. Could you, uh, the Cabinet Secretary, expand on her answer and perhaps give uh, other examples of what the Scottish Government is doing to ensure that students from uh, disadvantaged backgrounds in Scotland get the opportunity to take part in uh, university education? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, President Officer. Um, the programme for Government very clearly uh, set out the creation of uh, a widening access commission. Um, and this commission will advise on how the, the number of students entering university from the more disadvantaged areas or backgrounds, how that can be increased. Uh, of course, uh, the proportion of 18-year-olds uh, from disadvantaged backgrounds uh, going to university under this Government uh, is indeed improved uh, from the previous Government. However, uh, we will not detract from the fact that much more uh, needs to be done uh, and for example that's why there is two million pounds of funding in 15-16 for uh, local widening access initiatives uh, through the Scottish Funding Council and the funding for the Impact for Access Fund uh, has been doubled. Ian Gray. The uh, Cabinet Secretary has, her government has uh, reduced uh, the size of bursaries available to students and uh, lowered the income threshold above which uh, bursaries are replaced by loans. How can she possibly come to this chamber and pretend that that is helping 
students from low-income families. Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, uh, Mr. Gray, what Mr. Gray fails to uh, recognise uh, that in terms of where we are now, we very much uh, did that in a collaborative approach uh, with NUS Scotland. And in terms of the points that he raises about thresholds, in terms of income thresholds, uh, that is a very uh, important issue. Um, and if you compare what happens in Scotland compared uh, to south of the border, um, the, thresh, the threshold incomes in Scotland are lower, but so are the interest repayment rates. Uh, and as Mr Swinney uh, said last week uh, in the, the, the budget debate, that is of course uh, something that we can look at, whether we change the threshold rates, and the threshold rates are due uh, to, to be uplifted. Uh, but it does, of course, uh, there are some aspects of that that require Treasury consent. Thank you. Question 7, Paul Martin. Uh, thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government, what progress it has made on agreeing educational outcomes with COSLA as part of the local government settlement? Cabinet Secretary. Discussions on these matters between the Scottish Government, COSLA and partners, including the teacher uh, unions, is ongoing. Paul Martin. Then also, I wonder if the Minister could advise us, however she uh, seeks to present this, that the government have abandoned uh, the pledges on uh, teacher numbers and class sizes. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, let me say as succinctly and as clearly as I possibly can that this government has not and will not uh, abandon teachers and does not abandon uh, our commitment to maintaining uh, teacher numbers. This is a very important matter. This is a very important matter, one that we take with great seriousness and that we are discussing with our partners in local government. And while teacher numbers have been stabilised uh, since 2011, um, the recent census in December uh, shows uh, a small change, a small reduction uh, in the number of teachers. But any change in the, the wrong direction is a concern to this government. And we are firmly of the view that the number of high quality teachers is imperative to the life chances and the education of our children. Colin Beatty. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that all parties are represented in these talks with COSLA and that those involved should be consistent in what they say both during these negotiations and out with them? Cabinet Secretary. Um, yes, it is an important principle in any negotiation of any sort that parties have to maintain a consistent position uh, both within and uh, out with uh, the negotiations. Um, you know, the talks that we are involved in um, as a government involve all our key partners, including uh, COSLA, teacher unions, uh, parental organisations, um, other bodies such as Education Scotland, uh, ADIS, Directors of Education Scotland uh, and uh, Chief Executives of the Scottish Local Government. Thank you. Question number eight, Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what support it is providing to colleges in West Scotland to improve the fabric of their buildings. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government is committed to supporting all colleges, uh, including those in the West Scotland region, to invest in their estates. In the current financial year, we have provided £26.6 million of capital funding uh, to the Scottish Funding Council to support infrastructure investment across the sector. Uh, the disbursement of this funding to individual colleges is, of course, a matter for the Scottish Funding Council. Thank you. Stuart McMillan. Thank you. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the, that reply. And in the past, I have called for a feasibility study to be undertaken to see if an alternative location in Inverclyde could be sought for the, the, the campus there. I believe that the Scottish Funding Council have actually had discussions with West College Scotland regarding options for its Greenwich campus. I would be grateful, therefore, to know whether the Scottish Government will actually consider any proposals from West College Scotland regarding the fabric of its building in the next spending review period. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Funding Council has indeed been in discussion with uh, West College Scotland and has recently provided £70,000 to help it to develop a business case uh, outlining options for the, the Greenock campus. Um, that, of course, is a matter for the, the, the Scottish Funding Council. Uh, but the Scottish Funding Council is currently developing a 10-year strategy uh, which is aimed at determining uh, priority investment opportunities across both the college and university states. Uh, and this strategy will form the basis uh, of discussion with the Scottish Government around uh, capital uh, funding uh, at the time of the 2016 spending review. Uh, and I understand that the SFC have agreed to include proposals from uh, West College Scotland within that strategy. 
Thank you. Question number nine, Gordon Macdonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how many college students are achieving qualifications that are recognised and valued by employers. Cabinet Secretary. I'm pleased to say that 73,704 college students on full-time and substantive part-time courses successfully obtained recognised qualifications in 2013-14, an increase of almost 15 per cent compared with 2006-07. Uh, this is strong evidence that our vision of a college sector focused on skills to help people get jobs is beginning to pay off. Gordon MacDonald. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Um, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that this shows that focusing the college sector on skills for work and economic growth is starting to pay dividends? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, um, I think there is a very strong body of evidence that students and employers are beginning to uh, reap the rewards of college reform, um, as well as the figures uh, already mentioned. The latest statistics from the Scottish Funding Council show that the average hours of learning, for example, per student is up by uh, 59 per cent since 06-07, uh, that we also have uh, record rates of successful completion and, crucially, 17 per cent more full-time students between the ages of uh, 16 to 24 than we had in 06-07. Uh, and I think great credit, uh, presiding officer, is due to college leaders who have clearly seized the opportunities uh, presented by reform and are definitely delivering better outcomes for young people. Thank you. Question number 10, Roderick Campbell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what support it provides to local authorities for fostering programmes. Minister Fiona MacLeod. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Local authorities are responsible for the provision of foster care in their areas supported through the Block Grant. The Scottish Government have provided over a million pounds between 2007 and 2014 to the fostering network to support local authorities and the wider sector to recruit, retain and develop foster carers. The Scottish Government produced the first national guidance to help local authorities commission foster care more effectively and in line with the needs of each child. We are looking at ways in which we can provide more direct support to local authorities in strategic commissioning and how to optimise recruitment. The Scottish Government response to the Foster Care Review, published in 2014, agreed to take forward recommendations that will support local authorities in improving the way fostering services are run and expand the skills of foster carers. Thank you, Roderick Campbell. I thank the Minister for that answer. The Minister will be aware, however, that it was recently reported that Fife had the largest waiting list of children waiting to be put into foster homes, with 27 children in residential units over Christmas. The next largest waiting list was 17 in Falkirk. What steps can be taken to, re to reduce what has been described as an urgent need for foster carers in Fife? Minister. Fife, as with all other local authorities, are responsible for their own recruitment, as they are best placed to know what their local needs are. The Scottish Government are supporting a number of local authorities through our Realigning Children's Services programme to map longer-term demand levels for services, including foster care. This will aid local authorities in recruiting the right number of foster carers when and where they are needed. In 2013, the Scottish Government ran a fostering recruitment and retention seminar in Glasgow to support local authorities and independent fostering agencies to share successful experiences and good practice. This resulted in a recruitment and retention forum being established. The member may wish to know that the fostering network's estimated shortage figures for foster carers in Scotland has been halved in the last four years. Thank you. Question 11, Alex Riley. Thank you, officer. Um, to ask the Scottish Government how it is supporting colleges and other adult learner providers to improve adult literacy and numeracy and what progress has been made in tackling poor basic skills in adults. Cabinet Secretary. Colleges are now funded on the basis of meeting the needs of learners in the regions, uh, including programmes focused on literacy and numeracy for adult learners. Uh, colleges continue to play a key role uh, in providing uh, education to adult learners, with 27% uh, of all college sector learning hours in 2013-14 being delivered uh, to students aged 25 or over. Uh, we are committed to improving adult literacy and numeracy levels uh, across the whole of 
Scotland as outlined in the Literacy Action Plan and the Standing Literacy Commission will produce a final report uh, on the progress of the plan in the spring. Uh, progress, progress in tackling basic skill levels uh, has been improving. Uh, the latest available figures show a small reduction in the proportion of adults aged 16 to 64 with low or no qualifications from 13% in 2012 to 12.6% in 2013. Thank you. Alec Rowley. Thank you. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her response. However, figures from the Scottish Funding Council show that since 2011, college budgets in Scotland have been cut in real terms by £61 million, and that there are now over 32,000 fewer adult learners in college than there were when this government was elected in 2011. Would the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that, given the extent to which college budgets and places in Scotland have been cut, this Government has not given adult learners the support they need to improve their basic skills, something, something which is essential for them to get jobs and escape the cycle of deprivation and poverty that so many find themselves in? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I do very much regret that Mr Rowley, along with some of his uh, other colleagues, has a, a, a misplaced uh, faith in, in headcount, when the reality is that we know the most meaningful measurement of college activity is indeed full-time equivalent. And can I remind him that this, government, this government's manifesto commitment uh, was to maintain uh, full-time uh, equivalent um, and in fact, we have exceeded, exceeded that. Um, and that the move to full time courses does indeed uh, benefit young people, but it does also, uh, in, in my answer, uh, benefit older learners as well. And as I originally said in my answer, 27% of all college sector learning hours are delivered to people uh, that are over 25. In terms of the budget, Mr Rowley will be uh, well aware that this government, uh, like our partners, is uh, living with Westminster austerity. Our the discretionary budget has been uh, reduced uh, by 10 per cent. Nonetheless, there's a funding floor of 522 million, increasing to £526 million, certainly more in cash terms than the £510 million uh, under the previous Labour Liberal uh, executive. And I do know that Mr Rowley does care deeply about uh, adult literacy in Newmany because I know his background uh, in uh, community uh, education. Uh, and I also know uh, that Fife Council have a very good uh, record uh, in this area and it's not unreasonable uh, for colleges to look to uh, align their provision with their local government partners either. Thank you. Question 12, Sandra White. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to monitor the pay of university principals. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government has made it clear in the past that some increases in the remuneration of principals have been unacceptable. And while a number of universities have exercised restraint in setting senior pay in the latest rounds, uh, our view uh, certainly remains and persists. Uh, senior pay packages should be in step uh, with the salary terms and conditions uh, offered to other university staff, and institutions must ensure uh, the highest standards of transparency in setting pay awards. Sandra White. I thank the Cabinet Secretary very much for, for that reply. Uh, does the Cabinet Secretary share my concerns over the transparency of university bodies such as the Rumination Committee? It's now on impossible to find out who are on them, when they met or indeed what was said. And according to Glasgow Caledonian, the Rumination Committee last met in 2012, which is at least better than Glasgow University's information, and could you meet with me to discuss these concerns? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I am happy to meet with Ms White to discuss her concerns, um, bearing in mind in particular the constituency that she represents, uh, Glasgow Kelvin, um, where um, it includes a university and a large part of the uh, academic community will indeed be uh, constituents uh, of Ms White. It is important with any body uh, who is in receipt of uh, large amounts of public funding uh, that there is transparency uh, at all levels, uh, including uh, remun remuneration committees. Thank you. Question number 13, Nanette Mill. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what educational principles will underpin the Higher Education Governance Bill. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government is investing over £1 billion this year and next in higher education institutions. In return, we expect institutions to embrace good governance based on open, accountable and democratic principles. 
Improved governance will help create better learning environments where staff and students have more say in how their institutions operate. Uh, our consultation on the Higher Education Governance Bill uh, ends this month and the views of all stakeholders will of course be considered. Nanette Mill. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for, uh, Secretary for that response. She will be aware of the many concerns being expressed at the potential loss of traditions and autonomy which have underpinned Scotland's ancient universities. What added value will the proposed changes to their governance bring to universities such as Aberdeen, which have been rated as world leaders in the recent Research Excellence Framework Assessment of, of the impact of their research outputs on society, business and culture? And does she agree that far from strengthening the sector's effectiveness, the proposals for university governments, governance could actually compromise the performance of Scotland's universities? Cabinet Secretary. As I said to uh, Ms Milner, my answer, we will of course uh, look at all the uh, responses to our consultation uh, in, in very great detail. It is part of a programme of government. We will indeed have uh, a higher education uh, governance bill. Um, we of course recognise that universities are indeed uh, autonomous, but they are also uh, in receipt of large sums uh, of public money. And of course part of the bill is about having a definition and a safeguard um, of academic freedom. But it is important uh, to recognise that issues of transparency and good governance uh, do, you know, for example, lead to a more productive, engaged workforce, uh, which will certainly improve uh, the, the learning outcomes for students. Thank you. Question number 14, Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how many pupils in Aberdeen are being provided with free school meals following its recently introduced policy. Minister Alistair Allen. Uh, while that information uh, is not held centrally, we do collect data on the uptake of free school meals annually through the Healthy Living Survey, which is carried out in February and published in June. And we expect the policy to benefit 135,000 children across Scotland. Kevin Stewart. Uh, I thank the Minister for his answer. Aberdeen City Council have recently changed menus in some schools uh, and parents have not been fully informed about this and have often been withdrawing children, uh, particularly those with specific dietary requirements or additional needs uh, from meals. Could the Minister tell me what, if any, guidance is in place to ensure that there is consultation and communication about menu changes so all of those that are entitled can get their free school meal? Minister. Well, there certainly is uh, guidance uh, in some areas. Uh, their guidance, Better Eating, Better Learning, makes clear that the involvement of parents and families uh, in supporting activity around food and health is essential. Uh, and in preparing to deliver the free school meals policy uh, for primary one to three, uh, local authorities must consider the implications uh, for the school meal service, for arrangements, including any opportunity that this uh, might afford uh, to make further improvements. The, it should also be said that the nutritional requirements for food and drink in schools uh, are in place and also better eating, better learning is clear that all schools, schools should have a documented process in place for dealing with special dietary requirements. Question number 15, Richard Baker. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how it is engaging with schools to encourage pupils to consider careers in the oil and gas industry. Minister Alistair Allen. The Government uh, recognises the importance of the oil and gas sector and indeed the whole energy sector in Scotland for the current and future job opportunities of young people. Learning and skills development which supports pathways into the energy sector is embedded within Curriculum for Excellence and features a number of national qualifications. Education Scotland, Energy Skills Scotland and Skills Development Scotland are working in partnership to ensure a coordinated approach to uh, raising awareness of energy sector careers with our schools. Uh, and this includes career events for young people at school involving industry and colleges. We will continue these efforts as we take forward our plans for developing Scotland's young workforce. Richard Baker. Does the Minister agree that despite the recent contraction in the oil and gas sector, it's important to emphasise to pupils that there are still great opportunities in the industry? Would he welcome the work of Northfield Academy in Aberdeen in working with oil and gas businesses to enable pupils to attain the skills for a career in the industry? And what support will ministers provide schools, particularly in the North East, to take forward similar collaborations in the future? Minister. Well, I certainly welcome uh, all the efforts that I know are taking place in schools in the North East and elsewhere in Scotland to uh, make clear to people uh, the very real opportunities, as the member says, that, that do exist uh, in the uh, oil and gas sector. Uh, indeed, uh, as recently as December, 
uh, the uh, study that was done, uh, fueling future report that was called, uh, found that uh, the, the, the sector in, in uh, uh, Scotland was uh, identifying a need in the next five years for 12,000 new entrants into the industry. So the opportunities in the oil industry, although you sometimes might not know it from some of the tone of what is said from some quarters of this chamber about the oil industry, the opportunities in the uh, oil sector in Scotland are very real indeed. Briefly, please, Christian Allard. Thank you. Does the Minister agree that there is maybe a simple way to encourage pupils to consider careers in the oil and gas industry and is to target teachers to understand the skill shortages and job opportunities that exist in the sector and that programmes like Your Future in Energy are already helping to encourage young people to consider careers in the industry, in the Min energy industry? Minister. Uh, well, as the member says, uh, the encouraging awareness amongst teachers is, of course, very important. Uh, and for that reason, uh, uh, Energy Skills Scotland ran uh, three oil and gas career events uh, for schools last year, aimed at uh, young people and their teachers, uh, with events at uh, Ayrshire College, uh, Forth Valley College and Inverness College. Uh, and these events uh, involve teachers uh, and uh, pupils from around Scotland. Uh, and there are further events planned uh, with the very important aims that the, the member mentions very much in mind. Thank you. Question 16, George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government to confirm whether it's met targets for full-time equivalent places at our colleges. Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, I'm pleased to say that colleges have again exceeded their target. Uh, latest figures show colleges delivered 119,636 funded places in 2013-14, uh, well over the target of 116,000. George Adam. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for our answer. And I welcome this increase in uh, full-time equivalent students. Could the Cabinet Secretary outline how many students from the most deprived areas in Scotland are studying for recognised qualifications at college? Cabinet Secretary. Um, President Officer, I am pleased to say that in 2030 14, uh, 33,439 students from Scotland's 20% most deprived areas were studying full time or substantive part time courses, uh, leading to uh, recognised qualification, and that is an increase uh, of around 1,800 uh, students compared with 2006 7. Uh, colleges have always delivered strongly for deprived communities, uh, and that is why the programme for government makes clear that we have a crucial role uh, in helping us to meet our ambitions to widen access to higher education. Thank you. Question 17, Neil Finlay. To ask the Scottish Government what the average college bursary funding is compared with England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, in 2014-15, a full-time 19-year-old further education student at college in Scotland uh, could receive a bursary of up to £4,000 per year, plus access to discretionary funding. Making direct comparisons is complicated, uh, but we have data showing that, in contrast, uh, a full-time 19-year-old further education student in England uh, could receive up to £1,200 per year uh, and up to uh, £1,500 in Wales and up to £2,092 in Northern Ireland. Along with Wales and Northern Ireland, Scotland has of course continued with the educational maintenance allowance of £30 a week, whilst the scheme has been scrapped in England by the Westminster Government. Neil Finlay. According to what we have heard during this session from the Minister, eh, the Cabinet Secretary today, eh, colleges are doing better, teacher numbers are not being cut, college buildings are all fine, student numbers are up and students are all very well supported. No doubt the Cabinet Secretary believes in Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny too. Um, will the Cabinet Secretary show just a glimmer of empathy and acknowledge that FE students who are expected to live on at best between £30 and £93 a week are having major difficulties affording transport, food and the basics that they need to complete their course? And isn't it really the case that support in Scotland is the poorest across the UK? Cabinet Secretary. Well, presiding officer, we can always rely on Mr Finlay to lower the tone because I was really expecting him to come to this chamber with some facts that actually compare college bursary funding between students in Scotland, England uh, and Northern Ireland and Wales. And of course, he has absolutely failed to do that. Instead, we've got his usual uh, empty rhetoric. 
and I asked NUS Scotland for the comparative data which Mr Finlay failed to provide. Unfortunately, NUS Scotland don't have that comparative data either. But what I can say with regards to students in Scotland, they of course continue to uh, receive EMA, unlike south of the border. Uh, under 18 year olds can receive up to £36 uh, per week. 18 to 25 year olds can receive up to £73 per week. That can equate up to £4,000 a year. And of course, for uh, students, um, you know, full time students, uh, they can receive up to £93 a week, which can be as much as £6,300 uh, uh, over the year. And when you try and get to the detail, presiding officer, to compare that with the south of the border, it is very difficult. What we can see is they have no educational maintenance allowance. They have a vulnerable student bursary for uh, young people in care, um, as opposed to having a, a wider catchment uh, area based on entitlement, and they have some discretionary funding. Comparisons are very difficult, but I was really hoping that Mr Finlay would come to this chamber with some facts as opposed to rhetoric. But what else can we expect? That concludes portfolio questions. I'll give a few seconds for members to change places for the next item of business.